Hi there, and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 19D. This is the fourth in a series of tutorials related to a preparation of the cash flow statement or statement of cash flows. This tutorial looks at preparation of the financing activity section. This tutorial has two main learning objectives. So the first will be to prepare the financing activity section of the statement of cash flows. And in doing so, we will review the reconstruction of non-current liability and equity accounts to identify any cash and non-cash transactions. So if you've reviewed tutorial 19C on the investing section, you'll see that we did account reconstructions to determine the cash flows related to non-current assets. Well, we're gonna to have to do the same thing for liabilities and equity. The tutorial continues with the McCoy Limited example. So we're presuming that at this point you're familiar with the information provided. And the requirement here is to prepare the cash flows from financing activities for the statement of cash flows for the year ended December 31st, 2020. The thing to do is to look at the non-current asset section of the balance sheet and start reconstructing the accounts. So we have bonds payable. If we reconstruct the bond payable account, we have an $80,000 beginning balance and a $100,000 ending balance. And we're told that the company retired 40,000 in bonds. So that goes in on the debit side, which means that this would be a blank. Our T account would not equal 100,000 if we take 80 minus 40. That means something happened. The company issued $60,000 in bonds. What we must do is show separately the cash from the issuance of the bonds and the cash paid to retire bonds. As indicated, this 40,000 is given and this 60,000 was unknown, but using the reconstruction, we've shown how to come up with the 60,000. In some cases, you may have $60,000 issued on a bond related to the acquisition of equipment. In that case, the 60,000 would still be here because bonds were issued, but it wouldn't be a cash transaction because the bonds would be issued in exchange for or to acquire equipment. You would not see cash from issuing bonds because that would be a non-cash transaction, but there would be a note disclosure required or supplemental disclosure. So it's important to realize, is this 60,000 issued for cash? And it is actually yes. Next up, we look at the common share account. Again, we're just going through the list, looking at all the T accounts and reconstructing them. So common shares, we have $25,000 beginning, 47,000 ending. We are told that the company had issued common shares in exchange for the equipment. This was also given. And in order for that transaction to work, we would debit equipment and credit common shares. So this 25,000 is the exchange for equipment. That means there is a missing amount here. Well, this $3,000 to make the T account work, 25,000 beginning plus 25,000 minus the 47,000 ending is a calculated number of 3,000. That must be shares repurchased. And we know from the problem that the shares were repurchased for cash. So we have cash paid to repurchase common shares of $3,000. And then last, we need to reconstruct the retained earnings account and the dividends payable account to determine any cash paid for dividends. So let's look at this very carefully. Retained earnings, 325,000 beginning. We have an ending balance from the balance sheet of 267,800, and we are given net income of 120,000. In order for this T account to work, we have a debit of 177,200. Now these are dividends declared. Dividends declared are not the same as dividends paid. In order to determine the dividends paid, we need to reconstruct the dividend payable account. Now, just a note when it comes to dividends declared, you always want to read the additional information in the problem to look and see if there are any stock dividends declared, right? Because we can have stock dividends and we can have cash dividends. So this 177,200 could actually be comprised of a stock dividend and a cash dividend. Now, from the information provided, there is no reference to a stock dividend. So in that case, it's all for cash. But if we have a stock dividend, there have to be some indication to tell you how much of the value that stock dividend was. 
Let's say, for example, that the stock dividend was $100,000. That would mean that the cash dividend would be the remaining 77,200 to equal the 177,200. So be very careful to see in a problem if there is any stock dividend. In this case, there is no stock dividend, so it's all cash. But then to determine the amount of cash that was actually paid, we need to do the dividend payable account. We have a beginning balance of 8,000 and ending balance of two. Now, if you don't do the reconstruction, you look at that and go, okay, well, that must be $4,000 paid in dividends. Well, no, because if we include the 177,200 in dividends declared, that changes everything. What we have here is by reconstructing this, 8,000 plus 177,200 minus 2,000 is 183,200. That's a big number. So the cash paid for dividends is $183,200. And that's determined only by way of reconstruction of the applicable accounts. Now for key points to remember. The financing activity section looks at changes in non-current liabilities and equity. But when preparing the financing activities section, just as we did with the investing section, we cannot just calculate the change from one year to the next. We must reconstruct the relevant accounts to look and identify specific changes in each account. When we have multiple transactions for the same account, as we saw with the investing section, we must disclose those items separately. So for example here, if we have cash received from issuing bonds and cash paid to retire bonds, those are two separate cash transactions. We cannot net them out. And if we have any non-cash transactions, so for example, equipment acquired in exchange for long-term debt, bonds, or shares, those must be disclosed in a note to the statement of cash flows. So this concludes tutorial 19D. If you haven't yet, you should make sure that you're familiar with tutorials 19A and B for the operating activity section using the indirect and direct approaches. Tutorial 19C covered the investing activity section, so you want to make sure you review that. If you've reviewed all of these, you can now proceed to tutorial 19E for the completed statement of cash flows where it all comes together.